Hello everyone, my name is Vijay. I work on scientific computing at the German Electron Synchrotron, DAISY, and today I want to talk to you about the initial impressions um, that I had on experiments using, uh, trying to use at least, HDF5 as a serialization format. And just to give you some context on why we're looking at this question of serialization, um, so at a large research facility like DAISY, right, we have uh, different experiments running independent analysis uh, pipelines, and each of these analysis pipelines has traditionally been um, a monolith, right, a single program that takes in data and spits out um, the final result. It does all the number crunching inside, and the, the intermediate steps are all program internal. And at Scientific Computing now at DAISY, we're trying to move towards a more streaming analysis uh, sort of model where the analysis is broken up into multiple blocks and these blocks, each of the blocks does uh, one part of the analysis and then tries to send off the um, intermediate results to the next block in the pipeline, right? So this passing on this intermediate result data between analysis blocks is where uh, we think serialization would come into play. And to give a um, concrete example, right, you could have a detector or some data source pushing in data, and you have your entire pipeline analysis pipeline that's trying to give you the results. And each block of the analysis, which does a particular task, um, has data that it needs to send to the next block, right? And this data is typically multidimensional, and um, each of these blocks could be written by scientist X using computing programming language X. And um, we need a way to be able to uh, to ship data between these blocks. And the the answer for this is obviously to be able to serialize these one-dimensional um, data blocks and send them around, right? And of course, it could also be on different um, computers. It doesn't need to be on the same computer. So um, for serializing, why use HDF5? Why even consider HDF5? Because there's so many uh, different um, serialization formats out there, right? Um, what I found was that uh, HDF5 seems to lend itself quite readily to, um, to serialization. In fact, the, um, the write call is almost um, a direct mapping to a serialized call, and the HDF5 file itself is quite literally um, a serial buffer, right? It's just um, a byte stream buffer. And HDF5 has a lot of very nice features like uh, the fact that it's self-describing and I don't need to come up with metadata to, to describe the sort of data that I'd be sending across the wire um, in a serial format. Uh, there's also um, HG5 APIs available in, in different languages, so um, that's a big plus when you're trying to integrate code written by uh, different scientists um, in different languages. And, and I've also found that it's very easy to set up. Uh, in addition, there's a lot of things that come for free, which are um, um, absolutely wonderful. It's um, crucial for us to have compression because that's the way we uh, plan to send data across the analysis pipeline. And in HDF5, uh, compression is, um, is very easy to just add on um, pretty much as an afterthought, right? And um, so we've, we've gone through this and I've um, tried uh, serializing using um, HDF5. And I must say, Usability-wise, it's great. Uh, so uh, to the question, can HDF5 be used as um, a serialization format? I'd say the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, but there's some caveats, right? There's a but, um, um, and I'll come to that um, soon. But I want to point out that um, it's very um, pleasant to use, and most of the heavy lifting and bookkeeping is done by the HDF5 library itself. Um, and I can throw um, all sorts of data and dimensional tensors, scalar strings, what have you, at it, and um, the library takes care of it. Um, file images uh, are very nice to use. I can stay um, in in-memory buffers the whole time, and this does help. Uh, and pain uh, the, the uh, communication between processes becomes very painless because um, I don't need to cook up any homemade headers or any magic numbers to, to have to describe data as I send them between processes. I don't need to have a um, schema, right? I don't need to have a protocol schema. And I can pretty much assume that every receiver that will um, ever look at the serial buffer uh, on the other end will be speaking HDF5. Uh, I did all this in C++ uh, and I used a 
C++ wrapper library called H5CPP that's jointly developed by the European Installation Source and DAISY. I think there's a talk uh, about another C++ wrapper uh, also called H5CPP that'll be there tomorrow, but that's uh, that's a different one. That's not the one I'm using. So usability-wise, I'd say thumbs up. But um, where I'm less um, excited about is the speeds that I see um, with using HDF5 for serializing. The speeds are strictly okay, and I, I want to particularly point out the, the right call here because um, in all the profiling that I've done uh, for serializing, it seems almost all of the time spent in serializing is actually spent inside the, the right calls. Uh, and of course, I've done the, um, the tuning that uh, is available, right? So increasing in buffer increments and so on, and telling HDF5 not to worry about copying data and about managing memory and so on. So this does give some speed ups, but um, the, the number that I'm interested in for the use case that I have is essentially where I'm trying to send compressed data, serialized compressed data, um, across the wire. And that's this number here. And unfortunately for my use cases, this number is slow by a factor of five, I would say, if not an order of magnitude, right? And we have to remember that there's deserialization that comes on top of this. So the speeds are actually the uh, actual speeds that one sees at the end are actually lower than this. So I want to recap by just listing the impression that I got um, using HDF5, or sort of misusing HDF5 uh, to act as a serialization format. It's extremely easy to use. Uh, so usability-wise, I was um, very happy. And I was also very pleased that a lot of extras come just for free. Um, uh, particularly compression was very, very useful. And I think it's perfectly serviceable for, for many use cases. But it just so happens that uh, for the use cases that I'm looking at, which is um, sort of online analysis, very high rate data analysis, the the speeds are, are just strictly OK. And so I'm looking at other candidates now, so things like Apache Arrow and so on. But one of the reasons I'm presenting this here now is because I would also like to hear comments from um, other people who might have tried these things out. And if uh, you have more questions, please do get in touch. Uh, there's my email address right there at the bottom. Uh, thank you.